look around for your cup of tea. Oh, we're live. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Hartwood Turning in the Stable Studio. Hope everybody's well today uh, and surviving. Well, this part, this side of the pond, anyway, surviving the storms that we're getting recently. So, hope everybody's well today. Somebody's got the uh, YouTube on the background. I can hear the feedback. Not me. Yeah, that was me. I've muted it now. No. Slapping the wrist for Pete. There's so always let's, let's see who we've got helping today. There is. <laughs> today we've got some helpers through the round the window. <laughs> Hello. There he is. There he is. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome. First, first and foremost, we've got Joe. Welcome Good along, Joe. Everybody. Um, I don't is know it, if there'll be any singing today. Ah, oh, come on. Back by but popular there's, demand. There's maybe a bit of natural edge going on here, so there may be no singing. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Pete from Twisted Trees. Hi, everyone. And uh, he's already introduced himself, as usual, Mr. Mike Walt. Hello. Thank you very Sorry. much, Mike. Yeah, no, no. Apologies for saying hello oh, yeah. to everybody. Yeah, you're all right. We're used to you jumping the gun. So how are you three today? He's okay? In good form? Oh, aye. Yeah. I don't, don't see what he's going to do. Don't see what he's going to do with you, to be honest. Oh, that's fair enough. Be a nice sunny, grumpy. warm day down here in Bristol. Oh, is it? Yeah. Well, it's kind of sunny here, but it's certainly not warm, that's for sure. It's kind of... Well, I haven't got a heater on. It's um, 11 degrees in the workshop, so it's quite warm. Ah. Oh, it's only 16.9 in mine. Have you got a heat oh, one? I'm roughing it today. <laughs> right, get back <laughs> in the background. I'll show people what we're going to turn today, or what we're going to attempt to turn. Right, let's have a look at this piece of wood. And I'll just move my tea out of the way. I'll have a drink of it first. So we've got Morris the, Maurice the mouse. Hi, Maurice, how you doing, buddy? You can jump up there a minute. I have to set them somewhere where he won't fall off. And this is a piece of hawthorn. It's a crotch piece. It has a big lump on it here. It's an odd shape. But we're going to mount it between centers first and uh, put a tenor on this end. And then we'll go try and shape and hollow the whole thing from that one fixing point. That worth a try? Why not? Certainly is. I, so I like the word, yep, like the word ahead, try. Man. I know I like the words you use, try. Always try. No Rex point Beers, I've got a question for you, Mike. How do you put your chucks on the wall? Uh, I use Steve oh. Kerville's Chuck Buddies. There we go. Excellent bits of kit they are too. Yeah, I got some of them, but you won't print me a wall to put my um, chucks on. Oh, you need a wall. Ah, oh, that's that solves a problem then. Well, that's not good, <laughs> is it? I no, I thought it was very unreasonable myself. But, but unreasonable. <laughs> it's a, yeah. Just a little bit unreasonable. Actually, Steve missed a trick there. He could use that as an extra, uh, extra, extra accessories to go with the Chuck Buddies. One wall. Walls. <laughs> yeah, wall. Yeah, like a, a complete yeah. wall. Now, first thing yeah. I'm going to do is saw this. I'm going to saw this. 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 Uh, this branch off, so we'll quickly just grab a saw. Would you like off. me to read who's in the chat? I think you should go ahead and do that thing, Joe. Because we've got a bit of time, haven't we? <laughs> yeah, you have, I'm in no hurry. Yeah, go for it, Joe. Okay, we've... good afternoon, everybody. Now we've got Doug Miller at Woodspun Round, myself, Brian, Peter, Matt Pritchard, Chris Dodds, Malcolm Douglas, Clinton Wood Dancers. We've got uh, Lawrence Bagager, Malcolm Douglas, Brent Beecroft, Hodgepodge Woodworks, and I'm hoping Harry is along, along as well. Yeah, Harry will be there. Yeah, Roger Kent, Terry Bartlett, Steve Hale, Paul Hoyton, the Grease Peterner, Robert Dolman, Neil M, M Terry Bartlett, Dave Oti, Michael McEwen, Forking Owls, Wood Turnings by Barry,
So I'm going to use a ball gauge to start roughing this out with, just down at the bottom here, just to get, so we can get a bit of a flat. Or a, let me just put something on my head first. That was a mistake. Brown put, my, uh, put my face shield on. <laughs> no. <Yeah. laughs> Thanks, Mike. That's all right. Reinforced, of course. <laughs> a reinforced brown paper bag, yeah. So you get a bit echoey maybe with me being behind the face shield. But should be all right. Okay. Uh, we've also got Wivy Woodshed. Rexby. Harry's Wood Creations. Todd at Glencove Woodworks. Mark the Gentleman Woodturner. Trevor P. Hobby Turner, and I and the Yorkshire get. Oh, the Yorkshire that get. Is it. That, I think that's it for for now. Hi everyone. Welcome Good along, everybody. Everyone. Good afternoon, everybody. One and all, welcome. Just chucking a link into Steve's Chuck Buddies for Rex to uh, have a look at later. Excellent idea. Yeah. Really good idea. I'm just trying to flatten this face off first. Oh, Rex B's got a question for you, Brian. On the tailstock, does that hold better with the uneven cut? Because this has got a bit of an angle, well, it did have a bit of an angle on it. Is that what you mean, um, Rex? The step center, because it has a retractable tip, when the tip gets into the center and you squeeze it up, it grips with the teeth all the way around. So it's yeah, actually you get the step on the tail, tail stock end because it's not tail a stock. straight cut. And this one as well, is, the, the cut is away over here when it should be there. But we'll fix that and it still grips okay. Yeah, I think that's what Rex meant actually. The step centers are good for that really. Yep, it's very good for it. Really good drive centers. Or drive and live centers. Andrew designed those. Uh, the the Sorby were the first to bring them to market at Step Centres. That's right. Um, now other people have copied, obviously, the um, pattern or whatever has run out. They call them crown drives. But they're very effective. Right, yeah. so that's that. Now we can make a tannin for our two-inch chuck. Well, they're very good for the turner with less experience as well, because if you don't hinge it up too much, you get a drive. If you get a catch, it'll just spin on the centers. So it's a it's a good learning. I just use them all the time now. Yep, I do. I do as well. Never use anything else. Yeah, I sent somebody the other day. I don't don't actually know where my four prong drive is anymore. It's, just never use it. No, uh, I've used it um, on what I call big stuff, hollow forms and that, to get a reno and hammer it in um, when you've got a really big, ungainly bit of wood. But yeah, I use a step for <clears> that as well. Yeah. Yep. You can even even drill a hole, the width of your step centre, and, and sink it yep. in a little bit as well. Yeah, that's a good Same idea. Same as you would do with a four-prong drive, you know. So. Yeah. Michelle Higgins is in the chat. Hi, Hi Michelle. Michelle. Just get my Hiya. calipers. We can find them. And Graham said, these people that advertise their wares on live vids, tusk, tusk. And well, I'll just re reset this to and, the uh, right side. It should be 48 mil for my chuck. A little bit to go there. People ought to keep an eye out for falling trees. Yeah. Yeah. I've Never go anywhere without your chainsaw. Yeah. <laughs> Make sure it's in the boot of the car. <laughs> yeah, I got a phone call the other day for a tree down. And I went and looked, it was a bloody pine, wasn't it? So oh, oh that what a shame. That was, that was a bit disappointing then, Pete. Yep. Was it on its own? Was it a lonesome pine? It was lonesome, oh. yeah. <laughs> oh, what? He's on the trail of the lonesome pine. Okay, Rex, we've yeah. got a follow up question. Yep. Are there different step centre sizes? Yes, there are. Yes, yep. there are. 
This is these uh, are one inch or twenty five mil. I think there's thirty two mil as well. I I use the one inch one on the drive. I don't actually have a tailstock one. Hmm. I just use a, a ring drive on the tailstock. Somebody but, um, else the other night didn't they pete about the if the larger one is necessary and i've actually never found it to be necessary there yeah. might be one or two times oh i could have done with a bigger one but the the one inch is a really good all-rounder in my opinion is it use the one inch and there are occasional times when the inch and a quarter might have made a slight advantage but by the yeah. time you've um, figured that out you've already done it with a one inch anyway so exactly yeah, and you can get them either to fit into the chuck or to go into the more taper so hmm. um, i must be honest i've got i've i got the one for the chuck about a year ago and i never use anything else now it's very handy yeah <clears throat> especially when you're making a tenon because you can actually eyeball the tenon barry's wood creations is asking is this piece wet or dry brian it's wet wet well wet this one is only cut down uh, within the last two weeks wouldn't it be nice as just joined us good afternoon just go and nip and that little knob off that hub on the bottom on the, on the uh hi lewis answer hi lewis oh, hi lewis let's see Glenn said the chainsaw is already in the boot of joe's new car <laughs> typical Glenn. typical you should have stuck it on the back of your bike mate <laughs> yeah. uh, I'll get a lot of weight in the back of a bike, though. That's a sore subject, his bike, at the moment. All right, it's okay. So we'll just hold that on it? the step centre so it's in the chuck and it's loose. I know we'll tighten it up. Don't drop the hair. And for the newer, for the turner without, with less experience, the reason Brian's doing that is it centres it up nicely in the chuck because you're using the centre mark when you made the tenon. And it leaves your hands free to fill it out with chuck keys and drink your tea at the same time or whatever you're going to do. And this is wet, so it'll, we'll just leave it for a few seconds here. And turn that up. And prepare to bring this flat. And I hate to be a pain, but again, for the turner with less, I'm not going to say that anymore. For the newer turner, when you've got wet wood, <laughs> when you've got wet wood in uh, on a tenon, like in compression mode, always check because you're compressing the fibres and um, you could loosen the hold in the chuck. Yeah, yeah, good. So we'll just try and bring this down flat now. And we'll use a three eight pole guys for that. To see how it goes. Later's right. running at yes, mate. I'll do the chuck first. I, know, I was just checking it first, making sure it was spin. Should be all right. Close. Close. <laughs> Lucky it's labelled, eh? Yeah, it says open and close. Oh. Invariably, I try to turn it the wrong way. Invariably, it should be okay now. So we'll try that now. Jennifer Crafts Creations. Hi, it? Jennifer. Afternoon, Hi, Jennifer. Jennifer. So Hi, 600 yeah. reds. We'll just pop this up a little bit. And, and wouldn't it be nice with, is reminding Mike that it's Hugh. Say again? Oh, yes, Hugh. I, I'm sorry. I always forget that, Hugh. I, it's my age, mate. Hugh's not very well at that. He's got a bad back. Not getting much turning done. In fact, he's not getting any turning done. Sympathies. I'm suffering with a bad back. And Barry's wood turning. Uh, sorry, wood turning by Barry. He said, Blooming heck, Mike, are you back to work yet? No, Monday. Monday, mate. I was going back today, but. Uh, he decided to talk to us instead. They have very kindly given me four, holiday, four days holiday, and they say start Monday. So I'm not going to argue oh. with that. Rixby, is Actually, a hog the horn tomorrow, difficult to turn? <laughs> yeah, no. The weather is it tomorrow, the, then uh, it's a good, just a way not back to Monday, really. The biggest problem with Hawthorne yeah. is it splits like the very devil. Mm. I had some cut about uh, a year and a half ago. 
And I did everything I could. I cut them into lengths that were a little bit longer than I thought I would need. Sealed the ends. Uh, sealed the ends actually three times because I used thin CA glue. And in the, in the wood store, glue. there are a lot of yeah, PVA. Hmm. What did I say? CA. CA. Oh, I meant PVA, sorry. Um, the biggest problem I find is all thorns. And it's all split. Yeah. Biggest problem I find with hawthorns is that farmers use it as fence posts. So you'd be cutting into it and you find that there's a bit of embedded barbed wire in there which it's grown mm. over. Yeah. Yeah, or the odd staple. Yeah. I must admit I've been guilty of doing that myself, so. I had it happen yeah. once Can't and really I just invested much. in a very cheap metal detector and it does the job admirably. That's a good idea, Mike. Metal meter. I don't, I don't say metal detector. Yeah, like <laughs> no. a stud finder yeah, kind of thing. Detector thing. Yeah. 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 There's only a cheap one. And it, it, it well, works. Yeah, Glenn, I shout. He's got a, he's got a metal detector. <laughs> There's a cold yeah. glitter. Who's that? Joe. <laughs> hey. Right, let's have a look, see what that's like. There Robert or Harry said... If that were an axe, Mr. Chuck, then you would have turned that the right way. <laughs> <laughs> nice well, one. I turned it the right way. What do you mean the right way? There's no right way. When you've got a good Chuck, it's always the right way. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, do you know? I'm just going to take some of this off the outside, I think. The reason I'm wearing a face shield is lots of bits of bark flying off of this one. Mm. That's from real simple things, is it? And Steve, oh, yeah. SK Crafts is in as well. Hey, Steve. Both of you. Good afternoon, the pair of you. The Mark, Mark, the gentleman wood turner says, Sorry, I'm not chatting much. I'm in the middle of colouring a vase. Don't apologise, Mark. We're all very happy, you know, we're staying quiet. <laughs> not as happy as everybody would if I stayed quiet, but that's not going to happen. That's never going to happen. Soon. No, well, not any time soon, anyway. Not. Graham Taylor has joined us. Hi, Hi Graham. Graham. Afternoon. Welcome. Oh, my good ladies just returned from the food shop, which I would have had to go had I not been here, really. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, I'm really so I saved, you from, I saved you from the weekly shop. Yeah, I can't even help her unload the car. No. Well, I could, but it would be very rude of me. It would. It's much <laughs> less rude to let your poor lady wife struggle with the heavy groceries on her own. I, I, exactly. I'm quite happy if you if you need to go there, mate. You know? No, 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 no. I wouldn't dream of it, sure, Brian. Sure, none of us will miss you much. <laughs> 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 Oh, how much did I enjoy that? <laughs> <laughs> so what shape are you going for him, Brian? I have no idea. I'm just making up as I go along. Nice flared vase would be nice on there. <clears throat> yeah, I think I'll bring it in yeah. a bit narrower at the bottom here. I, I go with an apple trumpet myself. An apple trumpet? Okay. Yeah. A couple no of inclusions. Spherical like. bit in the bottom, a couple of inclusions in it, make it better. Yeah. And then... Uh, Trump it out at the top. So you think it needs to be narrow at the bottom? Yeah, I, I just you know, sort of go apple this shape. Um, have a waist in the middle of it and then um, trump it out. Oh, I'm there. I go okay. flare, do you see? Is it amazing how different, uh, different people have different ideas? I'd flare that, you see, I'd have it a bit thinner at the bottom and then just use the natural flare. So do you, you... what are you saying, Pete? Do you want this to be more rounded at the bottom? Yeah. More more rounded than here. Yeah, I put a, put a curve in the bottom. And I'll come into a waist about where you've got to at the moment and then flare out from there. So so up here so you get effectively a double curve in it. The only reason oh, is like, I don't really like okay. straight straight lines very much. I'm confused. You mean like you an don't OG get the best then, out of the basically. grain that way. Yeah. Well, I find a pencil. 
That's a good idea. So, well, you saying bring something round here like this, and then come back up in a waist in here, and then flare back out again? Yeah. Well, that that much, Pete. Is that what you're thinking? Not quite that much, but um, yeah, that's the that's the idea. Just get yourself oh, a, yeah. a nice little bit of a curve at the bottom, curve in the middle, and then uh, an outward facing curve at the top. You try and do a sort of an OG curve, really. Be nice. Yeah. Wouldn't it? Mm. Okay. So. Now the archer git says, "Get Moo to do what Dur does. Walks in the door and tells me the car needs unloading, love." <laughs> so should I put the waist in first? Do you think? What do you think? Well, put the waist in first. Gonna make my lunch as well. Ah, oh. oh, you're so spoiled. There's one person who can't wait for you to go back to work, and it's not this lot. <laughs> yeah, you're not. She, she does have our oh. sympathies, Mike. We only get to deal with you a couple times a week. Exactly. And Gemini is in the chat. Hi, Ben. Hi, Ben. Hi, Ben. It's a nice bit of walnut on the lays that, um... A bit of walnut, yeah. Twelve ninety nine it was. Yeah, a bit of walnut. cost twelve ninety nine, and, um, Brian's going to turn a Big Mac out of it. <laughs> Damn cheese. With cheese, yeah. Is this something oh. like the idea you're talking about, Pete? No, 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 no. Yeah, more curvy. Curvaceous is good. More curvy. Too much cut. Yep, you're going the right direction. And to my eye, if you follow that curve from there, that'll be a perfect curve. But I wouldn't have such a bulbous, concave curve. No. The concave that he was doing before the cut was too big was about right. So do, do what? Yeah, no, so that's uh, follow that curve down. So this curve here. That's fine. That, that, that's if kind of follow it. Yeah. Just tidy that up a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, it needs yeah, tidied up obviously. Right. It's a bit, it's, yeah. It has a, a two marker too. I'm not going to sand out. Yeah. There's a couple there. But, yeah. <laughs> but the um. So this base now needs to be. A little bit less bottom. of a bulbous curve, in my opinion, but. Less, less here. Yeah, I think I don't know. You, you go with yeah. people. I'll, I'll be quiet. <laughs> How, how deep is that um, bark on that? How Don't deep want is to the lose bark? that. Just bit here. I, if yeah. I take any more off, it'll be gone. All right. Take we'll a little bit off. Just edge it, edge it down a bit and sort of blend it in towards the bottom a bit. Try to keep that bit of bark as much as you can. Let's see, can I go here? See, your shiny points are going to be on the top of those curves. Or the, or the middle of the curve. Mark Harvey is in. He says he's not in long because he's just on his dinner time. Hi, Mark. Welcome along, Hi, Mark. Mark. <laughs> Mark, the gentleman would have says, Brian, after recent design choices from the Walt, are you sure you want to be listening to him? I uh, well, particularly when it comes to bases, Mark. Yeah, I understand where you come from, man. <laughs> Give me a whole hard time last Monday about bases, and then produced one the other day, which was uh, slightly bigger than the top. Clumpesque is the word. Massive was the word I was looking. <laughs> Massive. <laughs> well, I won't go quite that far, but okay. <coughs> I don't know what I'm doing here. It's making us up to go along now. No surprise there then. So, is, it, is this not too wide still? Well, if turn if you over. bring turn it turn it around again. If you if you finish off the top curve, the concave curve, um, and then you can decide 
or Pete can decide. You can't go too much, you can't go too much further on a base or you'll lose the inclusions. Yep. Yeah. But, um, um, let's just let's just put a finish on here. Try and get a, a bit of a finishing cut on this bit. Yeah. See where we are. I'm not being very stable there. What's going on there? What speed do you want? More speed. That's what was wrong. That sounds better. Rob CP's in. Hi, Hi Rob. Rob. So it was only turning at about 700 revs there. And now I've cranked it up, and I'll tell you what it is in a minute. I just want that to flare out of there. It's, uh, we're running now at 1,000 RPM. Yeah, 900, right. 994 to be precise. Ruby Claire has joined us. Good afternoon. Hi, Ruby. Hi, Ruby. How's your husband doing? Yeah, good question, Pete. Mm. Hope he's feeling better or recovering. Or What do you think now? Is that a better shape now? Yeah, the top bit's yeah, lovely. It's, uh, it's definitely needs getting be, there. It just needs, needs a bit of finessing fun. on the bottom. Uh, yeah. Just a little bit more of a flow between the two, perhaps. All right, okay. Um, so nuts of bulbous here, just kind of bring yeah, it. Just bring yeah, it bring here more, rather than have an edge. A bit gentler. A little cove there, rather than yeah. an edge. This is what I was intending to try and put in. Just a little cool. Just uh, Steve is having to go back to work. Bye, Steve. So, All the best, Steve. Okay, Enjoy. bye, Steve. Thanks for coming in, bit. Needy there. Millimeter, all good bit. Just needy there, mate. Yeah. Just smooth that bottom off, and that, to me, looks perfect. I don't know about you, Pete. Yep, you... Yeah. Lost your curve at the bottom a bit. You need to work yeah. on that a bit. And Lewis is saying to, for his eye, a little bit more to have it to make the base smaller. Yeah. So it's kind of going along yeah. with what you're saying. Well, it must be wrong then. Hi, Lewis. <laughs> <laughs> Glenn saying, would the spindle roofing grouse not give you a smoother cut on on that concave? May go on, yep. Just give me a second to uh, see can I achieve something here. Mark Have is having to go back to it um, now. So yeah, get back to work, Mark. Later. I need Bye, you Mark. to keep working and pay my pension. Get on with it. Um, Ruby's saying her husband is doing a bit better and is in rehab now. Ah, uh, good. Excellent. Excellent. That's good, good news. news. Good, good news, news, Ruby. Give him our regards. Well, if I go any more, that's going to go lose that. Yeah, I, I was, I was, I would keep that. You got a little, yeah. little bit of a shoulder there. Um, just try Glenn's advice there. At the bottom with the of the, the um, yeah, 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 yeah. It's a bit I'm, sharp I'm, there. I'm trying to just work on this bit to get this curve nice. Let's use the spindle roughing gauge in there just as a skew, basically. Just to try and get that nice. And I know I'm cutting up hell a little bit there. It doesn't There's matter. It's a freshly sharpening gauge and it's wet wood. It's not going to make any difference. That's much better. Yeah, nearly there. So I'm kind of happy with that. This bit here now we have to worry about. Yeah. <clears throat> um, go back to the 3H ball gauge. Mark Stratton has come. Hi, Mark. Afternoon, Afternoon. Mark. Hello, Mark. And so is Greg Alexander. Hi, Greg. Afternoon, Greg. Welcome. And Rob CP, did we say hello to him? Yes, we did. Yeah, we said hello to him. I wasn't paying attention then. I know don't, you weren't. You don't didn't say, say hello, hello to Rob. Don't say hello to Rob twice. You think he's a, he's special. 
Susie Swiss <laughs> Woodturner has joined us as well. Good afternoon, Susie. Hi, Susie. Susie. Hi, Susie. Hi, Rob. She's only here for 15 minutes. We'll get a move on, she said. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's all right. You'll have to come back and see the finished item later then. So I'm looking over here now to see if I get any little high spots. And I'm using a little shear cut there just to try and tidy up the shape. Lewis is saying Pete secretly wants you to leave a foot on it. Hmm. <laughs> well, if he does leave a foot on it, I'll say, should have left a foot on it. Hmm. If he doesn't leave yeah, a no, foot I can't, on it, I can't say... win with Pete. It's, it's either <laughs> right or it's wrong. And, and when you do it, it's, it's not right. And then when you don't do it, it's still not right. Now, how about that? Yep. I think that's a bit better looking. Yeah. The wood dude is in. Chunky Afternoon, Stephen. Hi, Stephen. Hi, but Steve. I like this nice bit of black that I've got left in there. And yeah. the Bruno is saying, so. Joe, tell that part of you to shut up. <laughs> shouldn't take any notice of me at the moment. I've been trying between the pair of them. So I'm not quite happy with that transition now. Just needs a little bit of smoothing, doesn't it? He's a bit of finessing. That's pretty good. A little lump just just a little lump there. So we'll take that off. Take that it's off okay there. From that, the top. Bit, there's a little shadow line there, which I'll take it off from the top, Pete. Yeah. Just give yourself mm. a, a very fractional bit more of a curve in so that you come in and take that, that lump out. Yes. And hear him in. Yeah. Right. We'll do that from here okay. and go that way. I think because this this edge is looking really nice here. I'm going to try and keep. Yeah. It's looking good. Yeah, it's fractional, not, not too much off. Mark Pritchard has got to go. He needs to make some moulds of resin. <laughs> resin. Shame on you. Wash your mouth out with soap, Mark. <laughs> More dead turtles. Take care and stay safe, everybody. More dead. Yeah. <laughs> Cheers, Bye Mark. Now, Take Mark. care, mate. All the best. More dead turtles. <laughs> Every time somebody pours resin, it's a, another dead turtle. Up on. There you go, yeah. that's fine. I think that's a that's good shape. That's looking shape, really right? good. Yeah, looking, looking really we'll good. We'll remove shame. the space shield now because I don't think shame, I need it now. Shame about the base, but there you go. You can't have uh, everything. Well, I'm cutting it off there. Yeah, it's going to be too wide. Do you think? <laughs> <laughs> I see you, Walt. Oh, well, I would stop. honestly. No, I'm, I'd keeping, bring, no, I'm keeping, it, keeping it, keeping it. No, I would bring. I would personally. I would make the base a bit narrower, but that you could only do that when you're parting off. Just bring it in. Oh, and bit. here you mean? Yeah, just just, a, just round us over a little bit more. Yeah, yeah. But you don't need to do that now. You can do that when you've made because you haven't got a lot to play with there, have you? Not a lot. No. But yeah, well, shape, shape's looking good. Right, now, so, just for a second, I'll take this nub off. Just go saw that off. Now, Todd's asking, is Joe's bird going to sing a duet with her at finishing time? Absolutely not. Todd. Just knock that off quickly. <coughs> <coughs> no, Joe doesn't want the bird to upstage her in the singing. Actually, actually, Brian, I wouldn't bother hollowing it out. I'd just take pictures of it side on. <laughs> so I'm going to hollow it out so we, we'll get... Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. You can fill those voids with resin. Oh, oh, he swears at me and everything. <laughs> can't believe it. I don't mind resin. I just haven't done much of it. Only paint, mm. basically. Mm. So we'll use a Fosner bit just to get us going in here. It's an end grain Fosner bit. It has a saw teeth on it. And what's the size of it, did you say? It's two inch. 
two inches. Two inches by five inches, and I think five inches will be fine if I can get it all the way in there. Let's have a look from tip to five inches to there. You could even get the front of your uh, yeah, Jacob's right. chuck in if you needed to, couldn't you? Yeah. Up yeah, the... I, can get, I can get right up to yeah. the muddled edge yeah. here. Yeah. yeah. But I don't think I need to. If I can get down to there, that'll be fine. Mm. Bit of weight in the bottom. Turn the speed down. <clears throat> Not that slow. <laughs> We'll be here all day. So what do you turn that about 400, 500 rounds? So just somewhere between four and 500 would be fine. I mean, I know some less only start at 500, so you could do it at 500. Hmm. In fact, we'll just set it at 500 and see what happens. We should also send our best wishes to Lewis. He's obviously not feeling very well. Oh, best wishes, Lewis. Sorry That's about that. That's 500 there, so we'll just he's agreed with Mike. Microphone. All right. <laughs> Sorry, you. I took that hook, line, and sinker, Pete. <laughs> Red B Cross has got an appointment at nine o'clock, so he's having to go. Just stop that for a second. Okay, see, see you, Brent. Tighten this chuck up because it spun once in the chuck nut. Brent said you could yeah. do with a force and a bit of extension. <coughs> Guns, right? I have a I have a good friend who's actually uh, making me some force and a bit of extensions, but it's been a, it's been a bit slow. But they'll get here eventually. You think? <laughs> well, I'm hoping so anyway. Yeah, there's a difference in hoping and happening. Ah, I like your optimism. Yeah. So as with all drilling operations, you just have to take your time, guys. You can't rush the drilling. Stick my extractor on. I'll see you back in a minute. I'm just going to get a bag of crisps. <laughs> Starving. Oh. <laughs> see you in a minute. All right. Yeah, it could be a while here. It would help if the tail stock wasn't going backwards. <laughs> I could take it even longer then. Does a lot of heat come from the fastener bit? Oh yeah. Yeah, it can do. You've so seen is that what I'm see is that what that's I'm seeing? Steam you're that's steam, steam you're seeing there, yeah. Because it's soaking, the wood's actually soaking wet. I mean, it's just, it's just off the tree. You got a stick of beeswax handy? Yes, I have. And I'll do that now, Pete, because I'm going to withdraw it now. I'm in the full depth of the fossil bit, so withdraw it now. Didn't need to switch that off. Normally, I would just leave that running. Just give that a quick clean up. Make sure it's. What's the Michelle's, fastener Michelle's bit made of? Is it stainless steel? Uh, no, that's um, high-speed steel, I think. High-speed steel is the usual. You can get them made of plasticine if you uh, don't pay too much for money for them. Well, that's, that's about right, Pete. Right. Like plasticine, yeah. Very much. So just you also get them with carbide on tooth on them, but that, I don't particularly like those very much. Now, so this is a bit slow and boring for you guys, but I tend normally to do these uh, this kind of boring on a on a video rather than a live. But what 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 was the reasoning behind putting the wax on the fastener bit? The, the wax just lubricates it a little bit, Joe, and stops it sticking. Okay. It uh, reduces friction, so you get less heat. So that's uh, okay, Doc. That's the depth of the fossil bit again, so I'm just going to go take my time, guys, get this right. Now, the last thing I want to do is get this stuck in here um, and have to take a big hammer to get it back out again. Uh, Barry said, could you not use a smaller bit first, Brian? Could. But would that have made any difference? It can um, make it easier. It can make it a bit easier, yeah. But once we get in a bit and we, we, we're not uh, really hurting against the chuck, we can start to force it in a little bit. Uh, the wood dude said, steam or smoke? Looks like it could end up as a show shuggy vase. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's this a is, shuggy bomb from the inside. This is um, wet wood, so it's probably steam. It is steam. Definitely is steam. There's no sign of burning at all on the fossil bit. So it's definitely steam, guys. 
And Glenn has said that they are made from tool steel, then hardened and tempered. There you go. I'm back. Have you eaten the crisps? Oh. No, I've got oh. a nice big, nice big lump of extra mature cheddar and some crisps, and I shall go on mute, which will please everybody. <laughs> so if you're doing this in your own workshop, guys, you could just take your time. It doesn't matter if it takes an hour to do it. But I'm kind of rushing it along a bit here. Now, Ben and um, for says, those in the chat, when when Mike goes on mute, you can't read either, so you can see what you like about him now. Yeah. <laughs> now, Ben suggested that if you use the smaller bit first, the larger bit would be more likely to wander. Is that true? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because it's got okay. a location point in the middle which um, guides it in. Ah, it's right. Straight. So if it's not there, then it's got you nothing the middle to guide it. It's got nothing to guide it. So I'm trying to do about an inch at a time here, so as I, I keep this move this thing along a little bit, like. I've got to go. I've got to buck the trend now. See what I what I tend to do is to <coughs> go in with the um, bigger one to begin with, and then go in with a smaller one. Yeah, so you make a shoulder. That, yeah, and then make a shoulder to the depth, and then put the bigger one in, so it's got less to take away. But as you say, if you haven't got the middle, but the shoulder does uh, guide it. We've all got our own methods. And to be honest, mine vary by the the experience of the first inch of drilling. So it's on how, how I'm going to approach the drill, drilling a hole. Exactly. I go for Depends. the easy way first of all. If that don't Depends. work, then I'll think of alternatives. Depends on the wood and everything else. Yeah. The important thing is, guys, in and out, don't try and do it all at once. Because you'll just end up with your drill bit stuck in there. And then you'll be beating it with a hammer to get it back here again. That's a trick with all drilling. Yep. Even even on a 5 mil drill bit. Yep. If you, uh, if you build up the okay. shavings in the flutes and they start to bend the drill in, into the grain, and it goes off centre. Yep. Just keep those fruits empty. And there's lots of comments. Um, Todd said uh, someone should buy a giant bag of chips for Mike. Keep them quiet all the time. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And Stephen said if Mike could eat more as an earworm, the silence is nice to hear. But the good news is, everybody, Mike's back on the buses, so he's going to have 37 to 72 people, depending on which bus he's on, to annoy every day. Mm -hmm. So when we get him back on his um, days off, he will have had somebody to let steam off on before he gets to us. Oh, well, that's true, eh? <laughs> now, some of them know we can take 102, you know, 102 people. I can annoy all in one day. Yeah. Wow. Harry's would great. <laughs> one, to, one more, guys. He says he'll yeah, catch up later. He's See you bored later, watching Barry. me draw a hole. See ya. Cheers, Barry. Thanks, no, I Barry. love what I, I love. Uh, I think it's really exciting, but watching people using a force a bit with the Jacobs chuck because hopefully it'll end up like Terry did. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's like that now, is it? Mm. So we're nearly there anyway. There is actually a video of uh, Jeff Hornung's um, Jacob's Chuck incident, which is quite dramatic. So that's me at the end of the chuck. That's as far as it's going. TJ Turning is in. He can't talk. No, oh, Terry. He's having lunch. Oh, hey, Terry. I'm Good having lunch. I'm still here with me. <laughs> Eating again. Yeah, but he's having lunch out somewhere, I suspect. He is. He's shopping. He's away shopping today. Enchanted him, wood him, design. Him and Grandma Ruth are away out shopping today, so. 
I'll just put that over there, so out of the way, so it's not in my way. And there is a whole lot of heat in there. Good afternoon, Enchanted. So, give this a quick hoover up here. You know me, guys, like to be tidy. Susie's having to get back to work. She's Bye, Susie. Susie. Really Susie. Have a lovely afternoon. Bye. So now we have to try and hold it. Bye, Susie. Bye. Bye. We're going to use the hollow out now, guys. Well, there, can we have the end camera? Yeah. This one. Should have had that all along. That would have been more exciting for you. So that's what we've ended up with. Now we have to try and hollow this. Not much. What? What do you mean, not much? Well, if you hollow that neck, then you're going to be coming out through the inclusions that you wanted to I'm going to be out through here. I would be inclined to just just curl out the neck a little bit, make that look That's... a bit nicer. Okay. Um, and... I can maybe find a glass insert to set in that too. Yeah. So we'll knock the speed up a bit. Just switch that off. Years ago, I was um, convincing to buy in a bottle cutter. Making. I what it was now. Anyway, I bought this bottle cutter off of eBay for about eight quid. Used it a few times, thought that's a rubbish idea. Haven't used it since. But I found that you can get these fancy jars now, jam jar type things, but they're long and skinny. They're about um, 40 mil diameter. And you cut the top of the threaded bit off an M using the glass cutter. They make great inserts. Yeah. And they're usually full of nice things to eat as well, so you get two bonuses. <laughs> Upper our wood turning is in. Good afternoon, Rob. Hi, oh, yeah. and Welcome. Try a different tool. Let's have a look at that, see what that looks like. Yeah, yeah so I could afford getting, it. Start to you're getting too far here. down on the uh, other side. Ah, here. Yeah. On this side? No, it's not too bad. Yeah. No, but it's, it's literally down to the bark now, isn't it? Yeah. Ah, well, if I keep going, this, this bit here will disappear. Yeah. That, that would look wrong if you did that. All right. So I just need to tidy up this edge then. In your opinion, Pete? In my opinion. And Pete's humble opinion. My opinion on that is because I've done exactly that and I regretted doing it. Okay. okay. You just try and finish this edge off then. I'll use a 3 8 ball case. Oh, that looks a bit high from here. I'm not even going to repeat your comment, Lewis. Okay. Lewis says, if this was turned to half-inch thick walls and then oven-dried to crack and cast, re <laughs> cast in resin, it would be very cool. Just saying. I'll send it to you, Lewis. <laughs> uh, going to say a puss cut with a bowl gouge might be more effective. Uh, Brian. He's doing it now. And that's before he saw your comment, Glenn. 
See, Brian isn't as as, as, as daft as you might think he is, Glenn. Oh, yeah. Thanks, Glenn. The the push cut will help getting and getting the edges as well, nice and yeah. tidy. They Rather than coming out off. and knocking the bark off, you know, I should be cutting into the bark. That's why I went to the push cut because I was getting a bit of a tear out there, which I'll. Mm. Well, Finney has joined us. Hi, Paul. Hi, Paul. Hi, Paul. How you doing, buddy? Hi, Paul. Let me try that now. Terry's had to go. So see you all later. Hi, Terry. Terry. Bye, Terry. Thanks for coming Where's in. Terry? Man. Hope you find a nice dress. <laughs> there we go. It's not bad. Now, I'm already about to get one for Grandma Ruth. Sorry. No. Yeah, get one for Grandma Ruth. It's still a bit of a. It's not. Just I'm just not happy with that at all. No, it's a nice tool mark there, isn't it? There is. A butte. So you might can see that now. You couldn't see that before. Uh, Mark, no. He said, filming this far, it just occurred to me that I could put this out as a 10 hour ASMR lacquer spraying, drying. Knocking back video with soothing music. You can, but don't expect me to watch it. Everybody's at this ASMR nonsense now. They little tiny tool marks, they'll sand out all right. Don't worry about that. What I do want to do is do something with that inside. Uh, so I'm just going to use the Robert Sorby on it. This, and just finish off the edge up to here. When you get that out, can we have a quick look at the end of that tool? Yep. Ben said... I always look up to my elders. Well, technically, I look down to Terry, but that's just the point. Just blow the shavings out of that so you can see it. There's the tool. It's the uh, sovereign system for rubber sorbet. This end is interchangeable, and you can set the angle on it if you like. So you can unscrew this, pop it out and turn, rotate it, so it's at 45 degrees now. Straightforward. Which, which makes it a, a simpler cut for you. Straightforward scrape on the end of it. And it's just a, uh, what the, uh, Robert Sorby call it a French curve. It's a high speed steel scraper basically. Yeah. That's all it is. So we'll leave it at 45 degrees. The other thing about this is a bit, there's a flat on this end, so when you set it on your tool rest, it is flat. Yeah. I think we've got one of them. Yes, I have. The negative, the downside of this tool, is it has that knurled knob on the end. Yeah, so you got to keep your tool so rest. So your tool rest has got to be that far away, basically, so, before, so yeah. you can... Get right out, which is a bit of a. A bit of a downside for. This may have to be microwaved, I think, this thing. Uh, 
I'll just use that to round off the bottom a little bit because it's kind of straight from where the Fosner bit was in. Find the middle and then just push the handle and with my right hand push it away across the lift. There we go. Brilliant said they used to call it a mushroom cutter tool. I think the naming convention changes regularly. There we go. I should do that. Yeah, they might have done yet. Let's hoover that out. I think a nice little glass insert in there would be nice, to be honest. Yeah. yeah. Sorry for sticking my head in there, but I have to be able to see it. Good help. Those eager lives the monkey will notice I've had a haircut since yesterday. That's not very nice there, now. Yeah, you can I've sand got, that into a shape. I've got a chip off the end there, but that'll sand around that corner. I'm not saying you should do it, but it's, it it always uh, that's what I love about this craft because everybody's got different ideas. You see, I would actually in uh, those in uh, the where the mark inclusions are. Yeah. I would go in there, <clears throat> so you've actually got a void between the two bits of bark. Do you know what I mean? Make make the yeah, mouth. Just, yeah. Just do yeah. I, Just make that's, both that's wider. What I, that's what I would do. But then, you know, as I say, then it it it's it's up to each individual, isn't it? Yeah, it's still, it's, um, it's still, still yeah, looks good. That's, that's exactly what I tried to do on uh, a vase recently, and I ended up burning it because um, it really that's didn't work you, well. You didn't like it, no. No. Fine. Should I make it narrow over here, maybe? If, if we have overhead for that. If, that'll, that'll have the same issue. We'll just start removing the bark then from here yeah. as well. Yeah. No, if you're going to leave it like that, and you, you're not going to um, bring I'm out leaving. that mouth at all. You know, sort of make it wider. Yep. Then um, I think you ought to leave it as it is. I think uh, I think that's the plan. Leave it as it is. Get it yeah. sanded up. It's wet, so it'll be hard, quite hard to sand. That's the only problem. Uh, Glenn's asked, which one did you have cut, Brian? <laughs> the one with the bandage on, Glenn. Hodgepodge is saying, won't this piece warp as it dries? So a glass insert has to be undersized to fit in the oval. Uh, uh, I would always oh. make a glass insert undersized anyway, on regardless of the timber. Yeah, because it's going to move. Because it's, um, the timber is always going to shrink. I wouldn't even or... put a glass insert in there until three weeks' time or so. Oh, yeah. Mm. I'm not going to put it in today, that's for sure. Yeah, so the problem with this is... You get this effect. Yeah, mm. they just go overhead there. It just clumps on top of your mm. sanding paper. But I don't care, I've got loads of it. And Hodgepodge agrees with Mike. He's had the cut through the um, bark. Mm. I say it's it, it's individual taste. That's all. It's um, and I I always you know from a a turning point of view, I always find it quite exciting doing that as well because you never know whether it's gonna. You never know what you're gonna get. I quite not... like the idea of having having the open wing if you like. That's... Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that that that's the thing. The good thing about but... being up here now is it's uh, it's going to keep the sandpaper clean now. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Lewis has said that is both of us now. Hodge, maybe group therapy is in order. <laughs> I think it is. We want to organise a meeting. Mike, yeah. get back to work. You're starting to corrupt the entire Institute of Work Wood Turners. I am. If I manage that, then my objective... My, will have my been work here is done. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, it, exactly. <laughs> the very very words I would have used could I have remembered them. Just beat you to it again. Mm 
Not doing my says, wet sanding with Abronet on wet wood is kind of satisfying. Mm. Yeah, try it. I haven't tried it before. Uh, I agree with you. It's fun. I've got Abronet, but I don't like it. I think Abronet's okay. Um, it, you know, it does it does what it says on the tin, but when you if you're on the on the uh, coarser grits and you're on a smaller piece, it can catch. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't use Abronet on this. No, you could on the bottom bit. Yeah, on this bit here, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But not, yeah. not up here. No. See, I would. Oh, really see, this, this is it, Pete. You, your experience, I haven't got yet. I'll have to find out myself. <laughs> what I use is I've got a, a mayonnaise bottle, plastic one. Cut a strip of that out. Uh, fold it in half so it's sort of a little loop on it. Stuck some Velcro on that um, and fix the loop together. And that just holds it with a nice little spring, oh, nice right. and gently against the work, work without um, so I'm using without putting your fingers at risk. Yeah, yeah. So when I'm using this uh, inertia sander, I'm making sure that I'm only engaging the bottom, so as it doesn't get caught anywhere like that. If you engage the bottom, the wing can take it and turn it. And it just rotates rather than being caught. Mm. <clears throat> the the piece, again, this is how everybody does things differently. If I've got a piece like that, nine times out of ten, I'll power sand it um, with um, with the lathe stopped. Yeah, could wings. do that too. Yeah. yeah. The little Simon Hope bearings that are in here are getting a bit of a hammer, but no more. Hmm. It's a question from Ben for everybody. Does anybody else find that hollowing wet end grain oak produces a much rougher surface than dry oak? Yeah, it does. Not so much torn grain, but like the flavours get raised. Yeah, I find yes. that. Yeah. <laughs> You're not alone there. Hey. I may have to power sand these edges. That's actually coming all right. I think working with wet oak is um, like playing the lottery. Sometimes mm. it's fabulous. Often it will just um, crack or misshape in all the wrong places. Yeah. So I'm just trying to roll over this edge. Ah, oh, thank God. I didn't think we were going to get a rolled over edge in this piece. Just to make sure it's not sharp on the edges. Actually, I don't think it make a lot of difference there, to be honest with you. <laughs> if you get caught with that, you're gonna, it's going to work, whatever yeah, It's going to be sore anyway, you're absolutely right. right? <laughs> but it's just kind of taking that, softening that edge up so it's not so hard looking. Yeah, looks, like good. That. looks good. Right. Looks very Let's nice. Change the grit. Go up a couple of grits. What's nice, Good it looks... Good for Resin and Wood Creations is in. Good afternoon, David. Hiya. How you doing? What were you going to say there, Mike? I was going to say, even uh, it doesn't matter what aspect you look at it, um, even if you can't see the bark, it has a good shape to it, you know what I mean? Yep. It's got a good shape from all angles. Totally surprised I am. you got to remember that this, this is probably going to be viewed from higher level. You're not be looking down into it. You'll be looking no. at it kind of side on. Yeah. Yeah. The same way as you're looking at it overhead there. That's that's, that's the right. kind of view that most people will get. Um, that's the view yeah, you'll get. So. Yeah, but what I mean is, if you look at it from the narrow end, it still has a nice shape. You know. Yeah. If, if you. Yeah. It is nice, actually. It is nice. What finish will you use on it? Well, I think it has to be oil. I think. Mm. That's what I thought. It's, it's really you're too insane. wet to be polishing, I think. Mm. Uh, so, sorry, guys, you're not getting me singing today. So it might have sorry. to be lemon. I think maybe lemon oil might be good because it's, a, it's mm. a, a nice light oil and it'll hopefully replace some of the moisture that's in there. I'm going to have to make up an oil song. Mm. 
Maybe not. <laughs> yeah, maybe not. Sand inside of that now, I think. And I'll just use my pad on a stick. Stop left synced. Make sure the pad is over to that side. See will this work. Nope. No. Nope. <laughs> Caught in the bottom, that's what happened. It should work okay. You just got caught in the bottom there. No. It's basically operator error, Brian. It's not not yeah, the tool. operator error, right? I pushed yeah, it too the, far. Yeah. I've been guilty of that in the past. No. <laughs> so I've heard in the press. <clears throat> Steady. That's looking really nice. I know I'm going on about it, but as it's spinning, you see, you're seeing the whole profile from the side, and it, it's really pleasing, apart from the base. But it looks really nice. <laughs> Mike's desperate to get me to make this nodal, are you? No, not not just from below your finger. When you bring it in, it needs to sort of not undercut, but it needs to come around more. Yeah, just okay. as you part it off. But it's going to be difficult to do until you get a parting off mark, if you like. So you mean yeah. just roll that bottom in a little bit more, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we'll sort that in a moment. It's a, it's a bit sort of flat at the moment. Okay, fix that in a moment. But, but I say there's not a lot of wood to work with, so a deft touch is needed. I have one of those. I might have used it actually. I'm afraid. Some more wood back on it. <laughs> yeah, well, I think I might have used my deft touch up. I don't know. <laughs> we'll find <laughs> out in a moment. I've never had one, so I wouldn't know what it's you, like. You don't get many of them in a dozen. No, no. I used all mine up trying try to work out with masking tapes and failed dismally. <clears throat> da, 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 da. Quickly do the outside again. Oh, two bits of sandpaper there. <clears throat> better better on better. There we go. They have it. plenty, but you know, using two at once is a bit extravagant. I think so. That's a bit extravagant. You're absolutely right. It's... It dispels all the myths about people from Scotland. Yeah, I know. That's just a myth as well. Hmm. What you mean, Scotland doesn't exist? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I agree. Right. That's probably enough sanding. Ben said you can flip it around and hold it between centres with a cone on the chuck end. That'll give you room to shape the awesome any way you want. That's a good idea. You've still got the centre mark on the base, haven't you? I hope so. Yeah, that's a very good idea. Ben, is, ben, you know, ben can come up with good ideas occasionally. Shame he doesn't do it more often. <clears throat> no, when, when he does come up with good ideas, it's a bit worrying. Yeah, well, I have to reshape that corner a little bit to go in there. Tennis ball. Tennis ball will not hold it. If I'm going to ro rotate it in the chuck, the tennis ball is not going to hold it. <laughs> I will just I go for shape. Wood, though. I don't think, you've, don't think you need to worry. If you... um. Take that shoulder down a bit. Yeah. Is that your you way? You better do it, do it with a spindle cage. Let's face. Let's take this down here. Spindle gauge. I think the camber angle uh, is showing you've got less wood to play with than you actually have, isn't it? If it, what I would do, Brian. Seriously. Let me get rid of this. Let me get rid yeah. of this first. Exactly. Yeah. Take the edge down, and then you can see what you can play with. Oh, you got quite a bit there, actually. Yeah. So I'm bringing this round more like this. Yeah. Uh, Just something well, like that. Yeah. 
yeah. even a bit more if you can. But I mean, that's 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 good. So if I came from there somewhere, I'm gonna have to go back and resand this now, and just bring that curve on nice and round. Yeah. And just rotating my hips from left to yeah. right. Excellent. And bring that down in there more. And then pop yeah. it off straight across yeah. there now. Yeah. Use your bowling tool there. going about a quarter of an inch so you've got some some uh, edge to sand. And then finish parting off afterwards. <clears throat> Sorry, Pete, I didn't understand that, mate. Use your parting tool where you're going to part off, go in about a quarter of an inch. And then you can okay. sand down and, and into the bot base of it, then, can't you? If I use that big parting tool, it's maybe too thick, is it? Yeah, you want a thin parting tool. Thin one. Yeah, I think so. The same idea as what we do with our goblets, Pete. Yeah. What I remember when I'm doing a live. But yeah, no, it's. That's the kitty. See, that I looks just, really, that looks really that good now. There. That diameter, doesn't it? That's, that's good. Yeah. 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 And undercut that a little bit. Yeah. That's it. Now, with a bit, yeah. of, a bit of uh, sandpaper between your fingers, you can actually sand just that sand. edge and then up and, up and around. So the, the bottom edge is pre sanded. Uh, you mean in here? Yeah, yeah, you can do that. Do right, that with right, right, yeah. 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 So then that's done. Then all you got to do is worry with the actual base on that plane. <clears throat> yeah. Well, if I can get down to uh, right down to the bottom edge here, I'll be fine. Yeah. I'll be happy. I can do the bottom easier. Let me just go back down a grit here just to tidy that up. At the bottom. Yeah. The only, the only reason for doing that slight under under bit and sanding that for, at the same time. If you don't get that transition ridge. Yeah, you get you almost get like a mark, don't you? So it's almost like a shadow. Yeah. <clears throat> of course, if you made the vase half inch shorter, you could. Um, have more space to play with there, couldn't you? Hmm. But I didn't, Pete. So I just have to play with what I've got now. Yep. Is that curve okay around there now? This curve here? Yep. That's looking good, yeah. Looks, looks really good. And Glenn said, nope, Mike would have the top of that vase in a jiffy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I, I think he could probably get that going in two different directions at the same time, to be honest. Hmm. Certainly could. Rob saying he's got to go. Work sucks. Cheers, Rob. Bye, Cheer Rob. Up. Take care, mate. And last but not least, about a 240 in there just. Jack Wood Design said, ever use a dowel rod with a bandsaw cut um, and then Regular paper wrapped around it. Yes, I do something very similar to that. It's not a dowel. I, I turned a piece with a ball on the end of it and yeah, that's that. it. Yeah. Yep, just like that. And there's an ordinary piece of stick with a just a bandsaw blade cut on it, just the same thing. For I'd use them for hollowing small, oh, small holes. So you want me to try and sand in here a bit? Yeah. Yeah. Watch your knuckles. Don't fold yeah, it, watch. unfold it. No, use, that's it, and then just... That's it, just use the that's edge. It. That's why I like the strips sometimes. I cut the strip out for that sort of thing, because you can have your hand on top, underneath, yeah. and you could just flow it around. It just means that the <laughs> bottom edge flows into the, the sanding of the base. That's much, right. Much tidier. That's it, that's the kitty. That's it, mate. Just round, round it in. So this just rounds over this way a little bit. Is that what you're trying to yeah. tell me? So yeah. there's no sharp edge there. That's what we're trying to do. No it's, sharp it, edge. It, nice, it's nice not that rolled. So, so like, a bit like a roll top bottom. Is that what you're telling yeah. me? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Roll well, the, top. The, the main reason for it, as Pete said, is is to negate the mark that you quite often get when you sand separately, if you like. You get that I see exactly what you've. I see exactly what it is there. It's a, that's such a really good idea. I never thought it of is. that. 
It just kind of finished that, rolls that edge over, yeah. and then it disappears yeah. again. I get it. That's a good idea. Mind you, I've just made a mess of that now. But never mind, we'll stick a bit of 240 on there and re-sand that edge. Just there, I just caught it with that sandpaper. So we'll give it a little bit more. But see, these little tricks, I mean, it, <clears throat> I don't know who I learned it from, but it, it, it makes such a difference because when you actually, if you don't do that, when you've parted off, then you start to sand the main body of the piece and you can never seem to get it to trans transition to the base. There's always that little line there. Yep, there is a little sharp line I can see there just as I'm sanding us now. Yeah. It's just starting you, to appear. You might not be able to see, but I can just see a little sharp edge starting to appear there. Yeah. You just round it over with the other. To the, and what I'll do is, because it's only a tiny little bit now, I'll just use that. Yeah. Michelle's home. She said she's going to be bringing out your cup of tea and a bar of chocolate any second. Ooh. She can come in with it. She's fine. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. That'll do. I think we're done. Just need to part that off now. And then oil it. Rob CP said he's just started uh, his new hobby today. <laughs> Trying to learn oil painting. Oh, very good, Rob. He's been painting a tiger. Oh, brilliant. But I hope the tiger's sedated when you're in there painting it. Yeah, I hope he was, I hope he was in a good mood. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll just put some uh, chestnut lemon oil. That's this stuff, guys. Chestnut lemon oil. And I tend to put it on my brush. Can you get a smaller brush, Brian? I could. <laughs> but this is the lemon oil brush. All oh, right, okay. So it's I'm only being lemon sarcastic. Oil. I know it's totally out of character, but sure, I know we're, we're not used to being sarcastic at all, no. Mike. No, I realise that. <laughs> That's, uh... Shut up, Joe. <laughs> your face. I tell you what, it Shut smells nice. Yeah, the smell of oranges. Yep. <clears throat> Cathedral plums. <laughs> the bark is exquisite. I should have maybe sanded that, shouldn't I? Here she comes. Here she comes. Thank you, Michelle. That's my cup of tea, right, guys? That was brilliant. Oh, she spoiled you. She, she, she didn't want to come on camera there, so she's away again. You shouldn't have said chocolate, because I'm a chocoholic. I've just got to be off for a minute. Got to get get a couple of Kit Kats. <laughs> be back in a minute. <laughs> oh, have a break. Have a Kit Kat. I'm glad I'm not the, the only um, chocoholic around here. Yeah, no, there's one or two of us. I like I'm a bit of chocolate. Thinking, but only now. I've been for ages now, and Lisa hasn't brought me any coffee out. Oh, ah. Lisa's, Lisa's psyched, huh? and it's unlikely Lisa's watching. So, no, she won't be watching. So she won't know. No, she won't know. She'd be working hard, I suspect. I suspect so. Right, I'll do. I can do the inside when I when I'm ready. Not going to worry too much about the inside, guys. We'll do that when it comes off the lathe. Oops, must have been. Must have been. It's a lot. And, uh, yeah, just, just, just a logic bit, yeah. <laughs> nice tiny little bark just sitting on that edge there. Yeah. Hope yeah. it stays. Should do. Should do. Uh, sometimes the trick, if you've got little bits of bark like that, is just put a tiny little bit of super glue on it. It'll soak through the bark. And attach yourself. I've done that a time or two. To try and maintain the bark. Learned that trick from Phil Anderson. At Shady Acres. Right. Because Phil's always turning sort of strange shaped bits of wood, isn't he? <laughs> right, let's try and part this off now.
Everybody's going to make coffee now, so nobody's watching. Oh, that's good then. Glad to hear it. That'll be the most exciting live, but sure. Try and get this parted off. Trying to make a little relief cut in there at the same time. Even better. A Belgian bun. Ooh. Let me just turn the speed down a little bit. Oh. Good afternoon, Michelle. Hi, Michelle. It's on the wobble there, so I better get a hold of it. <laughs> Whoops. Whoops. I think I switched that off. Yeah, I would. Um, I, I saw that there. off. Yeah, I've just made a complete mess at the end. But can I'll fix you, that. I'll just, I'll just can jump. Can you get a tennis ball and tail stock up and hold that and resand it? Hmm. Well, what I was going to do is just take it off now and then I'll make a jump chuck and set it and reverse mount it yeah, and then do fix it, that. Yeah, do it the other way and fix it. Yeah. That's what I'll do. So that made a complete waste of time um, putting sanding all that. Sanding the bottom, you know. Oh, well, mistakes, Sam. They do. Damn, I say, I say, damn. Oh, we've got some lucky runs as well. You know what they say, Brian? You can't learn from perfect. Yep, you can't learn from perfect, is right, mate. So I'm not going to do any more of that today. I've got it's half past, nearly half past two. God, doesn't 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 time drag when you're bored? I mean, doesn't time fly um, when you? <laughs> so I'll just show you that. I'll show you he what said I'm going to do. Someone sort of See suggested line. that he flip it and hold it between centres on a cone. Well, that's what I'm going to do. No, I don't need to hold to it between centres. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use this, and I'm going to mount that in the chuck, and I'm going to turn it down so as this fits in it. So I'll sit on the chuck like that. And then I'll bring up the tailstock just to hold it, finish this <laughs> off again, and then finish the bottom off. That's what I'm going to do, guys. Or, or, or just, on. or just get a bit. What I do is just get a bit of matting, put a bit of matting in the front, and put it straight up to the chuck jaws. Yeah, like that, and just put mat matting in so the chuck jaws don't well, well, um, well, well, don't well, mark this, it. This, this, there might be a, there might be another solution here. I don't know if this is big enough. Yeah, well, see, that's a piece of wood that you would normally have thrown away for the newer turner. Don't throw anything away. There we are. Job done. Yeah. That's for fiddling with later, I think, Brian. I think so, because it's that... Uh, we'll set it's that in there. And we'll mess about with that, and we'll just re-sand it, and it'll be grand. So let me just we'll take see, that we'll off. We'll see your pictures on Facebook later when you've um, got it all you perfect. Will. I'll just take that off of there, maybe. Maybe you stay on after Brian and we can do it on a, on a hangout. We could easily, mate. We could easily I won't do be that. there. I will be there because I'd be bored, but, you know, somebody else might want to be. <laughs> <laughs> you bored, Mike. I don't believe that. It doesn't happen very often, Brian. Only, only when, only when only I'm when you're watching me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, only when you're watching me. Yeah. I knew, I knew you were going to say that. I knew you knew. Rat, you rat bag. <laughs> There's no fun anymore. There you go, guys. Well, it was really good. Mm, oh, that's a very nice base. <laughs> like that. Yeah. 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 And I'm glad I kept the, the inclusions now. You could even put a zip in it. Oh, you could. Oh, you could do that. Hmm. Or I could, uh, or I could stick the odd flower on the top there, just to. Mm, it looks really good. Oh yeah, oh, you, oh, perfect. There you go. What more do you want? A mouse. <laughs> oh, Maurice. Yeah, uh, Maurice. Don't, don't forget Maurice. Maurice bonjour, the mouse. Bonjour, bonjour, Maurice. There you go, guys. One little uh, vase made from a piece of wet hawthorn. And we'll see how that develops over the next week or so. See as it dry out. I'm going to leave it outside so as it dries slowly. 
rather than taking it into the house. Let me bring you guys back in on the picture on oh. screen. I think get my mouse to work. Oh, there it is. Here we go. There we go. We're all back on the screen. There we are. I don't know how many people are still left after that escapade today. I'm not happy about the bottom of that. It's terrible. Fix it. Uh, actually, it's happy. Happy. <laughs> Oh, it looks, it looks really good. Looks really good. Looks okay from that side. If I just put the mouse in front of the bottom there, it'll be fine. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> you can't see the big scrape marks on it. Not not to be outdone. <laughs> Maurice is going to have to have a head to head with my Idris the dragon. Oh, it, oh Idris. Double headed dragon. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see Idris again. Oh, way. there he is. There he is. Look at that. There Idris, is that. a double-headed dragon. Yeah. Breathes yeah. fire and everything. I reckon he'll have, he'll have Maurice any time. Uh, <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> Maurice is a pacifist. He doesn't fight. Ah, right. No, no. no. <laughs> Idris isn't. So there we are, guys. That's another Thursday lunchtime live. Done and dusted. I'll post some pictures up. I'm going to spend a bit of time now and fix this. And I'll post some pictures on YouTube or Facebook, mm -hmm. sorry. It's a lovely place. Um, lovely piece. Enjoyed that, guys. Thanks very much for coming in. Thanks to Mike for earworming. This will be his last one, I think, for My a while. My pleasure. For a while, yeah. Um, My pleasure. So, uh, thanks to Pete for the technical advice. You're welcome. And the, and the design reporting. opportunities. And thanks to Joe for coming in and keeping us all on our toes. You're welcome. No singing today, but there will be the next time. Uh, next Thursday said, will be... So all you guys feel have mascots now. Harry feels like a trendsetter. It, well, Harry is absolutely a trendsetter. That's, yeah, that's, this is why I made a mouse, because Harry, we can't have Harry out doing us all. <laughs> I just have to find a voice for, for Maurice. And Ben said, my mascot is a Big Mac that I have to replace daily. Yeah. <laughs> so you have fresh uh, mascot every day. Recycling it as, finish, uh, as fine as Ben. Is that what you're telling me? <laughs> Excellent, guys. Thank you very much. Um, I'm going to call it a day and um, go, and fin go and finish this correctly. Talk to you all later, guys. Thanks very much for coming in. Cheers, all. Cheers. Bye. Have a, Bye. Have a good day. Bye. And... Bye, everybody.